welcome to Spark of Humanity, a production of Spark of Humanity Network. And what is Spark of Humanity? Well, in everyone, in each one of us, there's a spark of humanity. Sometimes we're afraid that something might damage our spark. We're afraid it might be put out. It can't be, even though at times we are not feeling it. Sometimes our sparks are defended. Sometimes they are distorted. Sometimes they're baffled. And sometimes I think they're all three. I would say you're correct. Sometimes so much we're not aware that we even have one. Regardless, in everyone we meet and everyone we think of, there is a spark of humanity in us too, regardless how baffled or distorted or defended. All sparks are made of the same stuff. Sparks have a natural affinity for each other. When you, through your spark, affirm and connect with the spark in another, regardless how defended or distorted or baffled they are, their spark is strengthened. That changes things. It seems that the, thre the st strengthened spark acts to erode the defenses, release the distortions, clarify the bafflement from the inside. It's very good. Well, thanks, everybody. Not, so, oh, 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 how might you claim oh. your spark? How might you claim your spark? How might you claim your spark? So that's from the little booklet of Spark of Humanity, which is available. And we, on, if you go to the sparkofhumanity.net, you can f see how you can make your own little Spark of Humanity booklet to, uh, to share and to use. So today we're uh, talking about the spark of humanity and how to nourish, how to keep the spark uh, strong. Strong. How to how to uh, yeah how to how to how to keep your spark in good shape. Uh, but it's not a really a matter of keeping your well. It kind of is a matter of keeping your spark in, in good faith Should because I share my yeah example? yeah. I had an experience with a good friend of mine, and um, I, she was complaining of not being able to breathe when, when I was driving her. And I am a nurse, and I know about people having tr difficulty breathing. And I was just amazed that my ability to have compassion and empathy for her just when she mentioned she wanted to go to the hospital, my instant reaction was, oh my God, no, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to spend hours in the ER. I just automatically thought that she was like making it up or needing attention or, and, and then afterwards I had to apologize because I realized what a jerk I'd been. And, but in the whole process of it, I, th I caught, you know, I realized it's like, what happened to my spark? I mean, normally I would have understood and been caring and whisked, it, whisked her to the hospital and because and, she, she was wheezing. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, what is going on? How come my spark is diminished and baffled? And how can I get my spark nourished again so that this hopefully doesn't happen to me because <laughs> right. it was just it was really an awful experience not just for me but for my friend because afterwards when I apologized and I said you know I bet you don't want me to drive you anywhere else ever again and she's like well not really because you know <laughs> I really was having a rough time breathing yeah. and it it was a good wake-up call for me and a good experience to take a look at my spark yeah. and I'm glad that I'm um, here and able to share that and hopefully glean some insight more insight into how to nourish my spark yeah. so that it's a healthy caring loving giving piece of me 
Thanks, Anne. That's Beautiful. a wonderful example. Yeah. And thank you very much for sharing it. That's, that's good. I think that um, before, so to, to give it larger, we talked, you just heard, we're talking about how sparks are, can be baffled or distorted or defended. So with something like that, because I'm not innocent of similar responses to people, um, <laughs> I, I like to look at, okay, so what's going on with me? Where was I, why was I, where was I baffled? What were the distortions that were going on with mm -hmm. me? How was I defended? How did the defendant, I like to do a quick, a quick scan, as it were, through those possibilities and then look at my root system. This we haven't talked about. There are some very wise, intelligent, caring people who say sparks don't have roots. And of course, in conventional Newtonian world, they don't have roots. But I, the way I think about it and the way we're talking about it in the network and on the Spark of Humanity website is that our sparks are fed through their roots and that's how they get to be strong and connect with and affirm the sparks in others is because our sparks are drawing in the wisdom, clarity, hmm. um, wisdom, clarity, strength, and community that they need. Um, there are meditations on the Spark of Humanity Network that can that talk about this process. We might do one in a couple of minutes. Yeah. But it's the idea is that our sparks need to be strong in order to be agents of transformation, which is highfalutin hmm. language, but the idea is that through our spark of humanity, which we each have, we can transform the people around us and the people we think about and the people we're worried about and the people we're scared of and the situation in which we live through using our spark of humanity by connecting in and affirming the other sparks. But in order to do that, our sparks need to be fed because it's tiring business. Look, Maury, you're looking confused and baffled. No, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm ponderous, I think. Okay, uh, ponderous. I'm pondering uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm I'm thinking of in Buddhism mm -hmm. that all life is suffering, mm -hmm. and then there's transformation. It's being aware of suffering, mm -hmm. and then transformation of suffering, mm -hmm. and it sounds almost similar to that. In that, and then I was also thinking of the a spark. You think of spark as just being boom like that, a spark, and then I thought of what our concept of time is, and is for. Whatever it was that, that conveyed to you in each and in, in everyone, in each and every one of us, there's a spark of humanity. Mm -hmm. Their concept of mm -hmm. your humanity and your life is different than our understanding of it. And are we, with our thoughts, create, when you were talking about we can make a change in other people mm -hmm. and the way that we make a change in other people is that we make a change in ourselves, and that's really what we're controlling and we apply that and we apply right. that right and and right. in that well, in our thoughts so we are so we create right our world and our perception of our world right so uh ways of of nourishing that thought to a uh, how do you do that this, how, okay. do you, how do you nourish that? How do you maintain the roots and, and well, the, grow them? Let's, let's talk about the, the spark because I, I need to keep this simple. Okay. Because yeah. it gets a little... Absolutely. Get very, so I try to keep it... Thank you. ...within the language. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, the way we talk about it in the roots work is that, is that the, the spark has needs. The spark knows what it needs. This never passes through necessarily our conscious minds. Right. Probably better if it doesn't, if, particularly if it's my conscious mind, because my conscious mind is distorting. That's one of the places where the, 
distortion of my spark manifests is in mm -hmm. my thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and I think of the needs of the spark as being roots, reaching out to get what they need. And they will get out, they will get what they need, my roots, if I give them the freedom and open up the opportunity. It may be new friendships, it may be different books, it may be a workshop, it may be more prayer, it may be meditation. Whatever my spark needs, my, there's something in me that knows what that is and has a tropism towards what will have the spark be strong and healthy. That's just the way it is. And so I, developing the sensitivity, the trust to let my roots access uh -huh. what they need and not be judging. And mm -hmm. on the other hand, not letting, not letting every whim that comes into my mind or every craving, to get back to Buddhism, every craving run my show. Right. It's to, to ha develop the sensitivity so I'm aware of what, okay, what's coming from my spark and what's coming from my self-will and my you know, desire for self-indulgence and the fact that I really right. you know, like chocolate or mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want my roots distracted into places of toxicity. Okay. And I don't want them getting cut off or burnt or something. So I, so I want them going healthy places, which is their instinct, because they are there to feed the spark so the spark can do the work of reaching out to other sparks. So it, to me, it, it's, it's, it seems like the, the, the roots would be another doors of perception. It would be, because uh, the roots to me seem to be like a conduit or a vehicle that delivers this knowledge or or strength or, or, strength or, or, or love or, or community kindness or, or community connectedness. delivers that into me. So right. that can come from any number of right, ways. Exactly. So there is no exactly. definitive. No. There, right. there are an infinite number of. Like Martha said, through yeah. like books or right. workshops or friendships or right. that made that really made sense. Music to me. or air or being with nature, which yeah. right. we both we're all three right. like to do. And we get fed, and the yeah. ways we get fed. So the the, the symbolism of, of roots, if for the people that are saying, well, sparks don't have roots, it's symbolic. Right. It's symbolic of, right. of, you know, you, your roots go, go down or sometimes they go up and they, you know, it's like they wind around here and then right. they wind around here and, and then get to any little I am crack. not totally off right. balance exactly. because I have some tethering right. yeah. and I'm right. not all alone because right. I have some tethering right. From, right. from all that is right. around me. And then also I get this whatever guidance it is from whatever else is there. Right, yeah. Right, and you're stabilizing the topsoil. Right. right. So everything around you, the circumstances around you, the society, the community in which you live, is has greater stability because your roots are digging in right. and holding onto other people's roots, and you're sound. stabilizing. Yeah, you're sound. Right. Well, like it, it, uh, when there's uh, the fire season, you'll have the trees burning down, and then invariably what follows the fire season is the rain season and the mud season, you know, and the mud slides. Right. In California, I'm thinking of, and, and another, any, any place where the, the, the top, mm -hmm. and, and not so much the roots aren't, aren't going away, but sometimes the roots do go away because things die off, and then there's, they're weaker, and they sort of shrivel up, and then they can be tossed aside. Right, but with our spark of humanity, you see, the, that doesn't the happen. roots never die. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so it's a it's useful language analogy to play around with, mm -hmm. but I, I find it helpful to keep coming back yeah. to what I'm talking about rather than getting too far off in the metaphors and the analogies. Yeah. That might be a good time to do the... Want to do a little meditation? Yes. Yeah, the root, okay. the nourishment. Okay, let's. Okay, we're going to do meditation. I've been done with these for a while, but okay, so let's get relaxed. Okay. Eyes open or closed, however we want. Ah, breathing. Feet may be flat on the floor. All our feet are flat on the floor. And first of all, recognizing that we have a, each have a spark of humanity. 
connecting with that spark, resonating with it, allowing ourselves simply, wherever it may be, in our system, maybe in our body, maybe outside of our body, but somewhere is our spark of humanity. And we connect with that and rest with that and get comfortable with it. Sort of curl up with it and become, let our awareness meld into it or it meld into our awareness. And then as we become more aligned and at one with our spark of humanity, we become aware that it has hungers, it has needs. It can always use more strength. It always seeks greater wisdom and clarity. And it can always want benefit from deeper and truer community. So we might feel something like roots growing out from our spark or from our feet or our elbows or our ears. Something like roots reaching out to what our sparks are needing at the moment. This does not need to pass through our conscious mind. It's probably better just not, not to be judging, not to putting words on it, just trusting that these things that we're thinking of or visualizing or feeling as roots will go where our spark needs to, them to go in order to draw in and connect with what our spark is needing. We may feel our roots, some of our roots here in this room, reaching out and connecting with each other's roots. And we may feel our roots, whoever's watching, whoever's listening, your roots may be connecting with our roots. And then people beyond, people that we may be worried about, or people who may have passed through that illusory veil that we call death. Maybe our roots need to go there. Maybe they don't. Maybe they need not to go there. Other dimensions, other galaxies letting our roots go where they need to go for our, the benefit of our sparks. Remembering always this is not any random exploration. This is to be gathering in the strength and the nutrition, the wisdom, the clarity and the community that our sparks need in order to do their work. So we may feel in ourselves connected in with a layer of roots encircling this planet. <laughs> and touching people who need that sense of connection for their sparks to know that we are all connected. And that somehow, as we are drawing nourishment through our roots, somehow in mysterious way, we are nourishing the roots of those we are touching. We are both giving and receiving because we're connected. We're in community. We're giving and receiving really have no meaning, because it's all both. It's all connection, it's all community. So we bring our awareness back to our sparks, our individual personal spark. And we see how it's feeling. Does it feel any different than it did before we started growing mm -hmm. our roots? 
and we rest with that difference or the sameness. And then when we're ready, we let our eyes open and our fingers wiggle and our toes jiggle and whatever we need to do to come back to where we are in our physical reality. And let ourselves begin to access words. That was good, Martha. Yeah, I, I really, I love that. I, I found um, first my, you know, my, the tentacles or a kind of root hairs, root hairs, yep, <laughs> kind of reached in and embraced my heart a mm. little bit. And I, and I could actually kind of s visualize my heart and, and I loved the, when, when we reached out to past lives or, you know, to people that have passed. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was beautiful to, in, to include everything. I don't think I've ever had a, a, a session like that or a, a meditation where it was so encompassing of all different kinds of things. We that never really, I love that. We never know what our sparks need, so we right. have to trust our roots to get it. Yeah, it was very good, and I could feel, I, I, I felt my, my, the roots going into the ground, but the coolest thing was, was going around into my heart. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank wow. you. Thanks. <laughs> Maura? That was beautiful. I, uh... I think for for me, I mean, that was just so lovely. It, my spark wants to open the iris and take more in mm. and listen. Just listen and observe and have that there's no silence there is no silence mm -hmm. it's interesting it's 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 quite interesting which sounds I don't want to use the word I, I just it's hard to define the in the indefinable you know it, it, it's hard to describe <laughs> the infinite so uh, I'm enamored of words, and there are no words for this. It just, it reminded me of when I saw this beautiful baby, and she was just tiny, and perfect little hands and feet, and it was just, she, it was just, the, the feeling that I had was just pure love. No definition, just mm -hmm. love, and it was, my heart melted when I mm. was with that child. And I think the more that I can be with that child in myself, of that pure love and others, the more open I am to being somehow light, somehow light and spark. Did the roots feed that? I think so. Right. I think in, in, in that the roots are a vehicle. A channel. A, 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 a channel. A blood vessel. A, yes. An artery. Exa yeah, yeah. A capillary. Yeah. A capillary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think really just being open to that engagement mm. and not defending myself or defining myself mm -hmm. but just being myself and that is something I often think of vegetables in a garden and think of am I a good broccoli <laughs> a, I'm just broccoli mm -hmm. I don't have to defend my broccoliness or right. I'm just a broccoli 
Some people don't like broccoli. <laughs> broccoli has no thoughts on the fact that some people don't like broccoli. It's still going to be broccoli. And that's okay. I mean, I'm me. Mm -hmm. And I think being aware makes you more cognizant of when you're not being true to yourself, true to that light. And when you're not being true to that light, you notice it in the form of distortion, in the form of bafflement, in the form of that defensive thing. It's like you're trying to get the signal to come on the radio or something or getting the, the, getting the focus in there and getting it so it's whole. And the more that I can head towards whole instead of holes within me mm. and what I lack but focus on what I have and what I can do and not what I don't have and what I can't do. Because what you have is the spark of humanity, yeah. and when that's healthy, that can connect with the spark of anybody. Yeah. And do them good. And that's a beautiful thing. And feeding them and doing them good. So the feeding the spark, so it can be strong, so it's willing to reach through, mm -hmm. so you can get I mean, I find I need to get out from under my bafflement and distortion and mm -hmm. defenses, me, myself, to my spark, to the willing, because my spark's nature is to connect, because sparks have a natural affinity for each other. It can be a very like, simple thing. Like, you're walking along and you see somebody and you just recognize them as, hello. Right. Hello. <laughs> like, you see a flower and you say, oh, a flower. There's Martha. Suzanne, hi. And somehow being recognized makes you just feel like I am connecting and affirming. I am. And to do that, right? We need to. We can't just. We can't just let the joy of that carry us away. We need to do the maintenance. Yeah. Of having our roots fed and letting them be fed, mm -hmm. and paying attention so that they're not wandering into places where they can get damaged or blighted or poisoned, because there are places like, like that. Because there are, thanks for being here. So, right, so we want, we want to keep our spark yeah. healthy. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you.